Okay, this is a companion video to one that I put out recently that uh, featured the mange shuffle quite a bit, okay? Now, the inverse of the mange shuffle is the Klondike shuffle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the Klondike shuffle in a way that I've never used it before. And as far as I know, no one else has used it this way before, okay? And it's also going to help us bridge the gap between two cycles and what are called AMP structures. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you an effect first. So as you can see, I have uh, eight kind of companion cards of opposite color. So what I need you to do is go through and maybe uh, flip one of them um, facing the other way. It doesn't actually matter. Okay, so maybe this one can go down like that. You can have them facing towards each other. That would be just fine. Okay, and then maybe this one's facing away, and then this one's facing like maybe like uh, like this, I guess, just to kind of mix things up. Here looks like we have a mixture of the cards facing different ways. We can randomly pick these up however you would like. You would just tell me how to pick these up. Okay, that's great. Okay, so there we go. So we have this packet of 16 cards. Okay, so what we have right now is technically called an AMP, Adjacent Mirrored Pairs. That's the official technical name of the structure here. Okay, so I'm going to do something that like I said, I've never done before, and I've never seen this done. <laughs> I'm going to Klondike shuffle this packet, okay? And who knows what this is going to give us here. Okay, so I'm going to Klondike shuffle. There you go. And then I'm going to dill out um, little packets of four cards. Okay, so four cards each. I guess I could have centered those a little bit better. And then we can go through and Charlie shuffle these, or you can tell me how many cards to cut to the bottom. Maybe you want one cut to the bottom, maybe three here. That's just fine. Then we can stack these according to your request. You want that one, then this one, then that one there. Okay, very good. And now I'm going to Klondike shuffle a second time. <laughs> and these cards are getting, as you can see, they're getting well mixed here. Okay, you can actually see that happening. Okay. And then I'm going to deal out just half the cards, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have these two piles of eight cards, and then we can Charlie shuffle these cards. Um, or if you don't know how to do that, you can just do a random cut. That's fine. Uh, Charlie shuffle is just a little, you know, stronger shuffle. Uh, or you can just cut the cards randomly. That would be just fine. Okay, and then we're going to randomly stack these <laughs> again and then perform one more Klondike Shuffle. One more Klondike Shuffle. Here we go. Okay, this is where you take the top and bottom off as one. Okay, very good. And then to finish, I'm going to deal out into eight piles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. Okay, well, where has that brought us? Okay, so just think about all of the mixing that we did with Charlie shuffles performed several times or random cuttings performed by you. So what is the ending organization of the cards? Well, let's just take a look. Oh, <laughs> okay. The eights are back together. And the twos. Let me take a guess. Sevens. Fives. Six. I hope so. Uh, aces. Yep. Okay, fours. I hope that this is a three. Yes, indeed. We brought them back to original state. And that's despite multiple Klondike shuffles, which if you understand that shuffle, it just destroys packet structures out there. It really makes a mess of them. And then with Charlie shuffles mixed in along with the Klondike shuffles, Boy, these cards should just be in a chaotic state at the end of all of this, but they're not. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about this. So what's going on? And so this is a bridging. This is something we did last time with the Mon Shuffle, but this time we're doing it with the Klondike Shuffle. Okay, so there's been kind of an outstanding question about 
what packet structures are there between two cycles and what are called AMP structures. Sorry, I'm not putting these quite in order, not that it matters. <laughs> um, so what, what, what are the structures between a two cycle and an, what's called an AMP structure, okay? So this is the kind of thing we started with, but we then randomly flipped one card in each and then randomly stacked these. Okay, so what we're going to do differently is I'm going to now uh, kind of stack them in order. And this will give us uh, a way to look at really what's happening with the Klondike shuffle relative to an AMP structure. Okay, so. Uh, so first off, I'm going to perform one Klondike shuffle. And I want to see if you can spot what kind of structure are we looking at, okay? And I'll help you, of course. Okay, so here are the cards. After one Klondike shuffle of an AMP. AMP just means adjacent mirrored pairs. That's where we had two aces, then two twos, two threes, all the way up to two eights, right? And then I Klondike shuffled that, and this is what I got, okay? What structure do you see here that we've talked about on my channel? Well, we're looking at the concatenation of a number of small two cycles, okay? So for example, right here, this is four, five, four, five. That's a two cycle with cycle lane two. Uh, three, six, three, six. This is a two cycle, cycle lane two. Two, seven, two, seven, same thing. Ace, eight, ace, eight. Okay, so if you start with a packet where you had those matching card values in pairs, that's called an AMP, and you perform one Klondike shuffle, it converts it to the concatenation of four two cycles, each having cycle length two. We say cycle length two because uh, there's a pattern that we call this a two cycle because there's a pattern that repeats twice, but the length of each of the cycles is a uh, two, right? You have four, five, that's one cycle. There's two things there. And then four, five, right? Two things in that second cycle. So these are each two cycles with cycle length two. Okay, so if we gather these, which is not, well, I guess I did that. So we'll gather those. Now from here, what did I do? Do you remember? I dealt out piles of four cards. In fact, maybe we'll do it a little bit better this time. <laughs> okay, piles of four cards. In fact, you can just push off those actually. You don't have to deal. Okay, so what's gonna be true for each of these? Well, these will be the very two cycles that we were looking at, right? There's the five, four, <laughs> five, four. I'll just show one more here. There's the six, three, six, three, and so forth. Well, since these are cyclic packets, you can freely uh, cut it, cut those packets. It won't harm that. Or you can perform a Charlie A shuffle, which is kind of hard to do when you have uh, just four cards. So you maybe just have the spectator choose how many cards to cut to the bottom, maybe two there, uh, maybe one here, that's fine. Maybe they'll want three cut to the bottom, okay? Now you have to realize that in the mind of the spectator, uh, these actions are really, really changing things. And in some sense they are. The order of the cards are very different, but not the structure, okay? So now the repeating pattern for this one is five, four, five, four instead of, I think it was four, five, four, five. Both of those are two cycles, cycle length two, relative to these two card values, a five and a four, okay? So performing a cut or a Charlier shuffle won't upset that structure. Then we randomly stack these. That's crazy, if you think about it, okay? They're free to stack however they like, okay? Then we perform a second Klondike shuffle, Okay, so we had uh, four two cycles of cycle length two put together, concatenated together. Well, what do you think we have now? A second Klondike, what has that done? Well, what it's done is it's created two larger two cycles, okay? So for example, we have four, two, five, seven, four, two, five, seven. This is a two cycle of cycle length four. Before they were cycle length two, but now it's double the cycle length, so now it's four, okay? Same thing here. 
86A3, 86A3. This is a two cycle with cycle length four. So what the Klondike shuffle did, we had four two cycles of cycle length two before this recent Klondike. It changed those four two cycles to two two cycles, but it increased the cycle length by a factor of two. So instead of being a cycle length of two as before, it's cycle length four now. Every four cards, a certain pattern repeats. Okay. And so if you remember what I did was now these were, you know, all together. <laughs> and then I dealt out the cards were, you know, um, facing down, even though I guess we had some cards face up. So five, six, seven, eight. And then I gave you the option to Charlie shuffle each of these independently or just randomly cut. Well, that won't hurt these two. That's a two cycle. It's still a two cycle. It's cyclic. Okay, same thing here. You can randomly cut it as well or whatever. Okay, now you can randomly stack these. Crazy. Okay, and now we're going to perform another Klondike shuffle. Okay, so if you think about what the Klondike shuffle is doing, it's a pretty destructive shuffle, um, except for certain structures, which is what we're looking at here. Okay, now what do you think we have now? We rec most recently had two two cycles of cycle length four. Well, the Klondike shuffle seems to decrease the number of two cycles while increasing the cycle length by a factor of two. Well, that's exactly what it's done. Look, so we have three, five, eight, seven, six, four, ace, two. Three, five, seven, three, five, eight, seven, six, four, ace, two. Now we have just one two cycle with cycle length eight, double what it was before. Okay. So that's important. And then from there, all I did was, is I took the cards as is, and I dealt them. Now think about what is dealing out into eight piles going to do. So just kind of think ahead here. So two, four, six, eight. Okay. So if I deal out these cards into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then run through the second half of the packet here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, what's going to happen is this will be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Now the next card to go on pile one is this one, which is going to match that one. Next pile, next card to go down will be this one on top of that one and so forth. So this is just going to separate the cards into identical valued cards. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can reveal that you've reunited the card values. Now in the presentation, we had some face up, face down just for effect. Uh, that was just a you know, make it seem a little different or fun to have some of the cards face up and face down. And in some ways it's pretty powerful because you're being given a window into some of them because some of them are staring right at you. Okay. So if you're hoping to detect something, you have a chance at least because half the cards are face up. But nonetheless, you can't tell because none of the cards of the same value will both be facing up. And if you go back in the original performance for this video, you'll see that. Okay. Okay. So um, anyway, that's the secret. So, um, so the Klondike shuffle will take an AMP and you know, it, it depends on how large the packet size is. That's important. Okay. I have 16 cards here, which is a power of two, very important, which gives me eight pairs. And so when you Klondike shuffle this repeatedly, it has the effect of creating a whole bunch of two cycles and then half as many two cycles for the next Klondike and then half as many two cycles for the third Klondike. And at that point, you just have a two cycle, which you, you just deal out. Okay. And it's going to match up all of the values just fine. Okay. So anyway, I put this video together for my LinkedIn group. Uh, that's my uh, LinkedIn math card magic group. Um, most members of this group are math educators, teachers, professors, or academics. Okay. So this video may not appeal to everyone out there, but to those who have some mathematics under their belt and like to see what happens with structures and mappings of structures, that's what I'm dealing with primarily on my channel here. So.
Anyway, thank you for watching and take a look and I'll include a link to the more recent video that I created dealing with the Mon Shuffle in the context of what we we've done right here. Okay, so it's it's kind of a complementary perspective on what we just did here. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.